So, all right, good afternoon, everyone. So, in the morning we were talking about like you know all the security features to OVS and <clears throat> how do, how are we going to like add all this like L7 classification and all the cool stuff. So, imagine that you could actually like you know carry this metadata like you know like let's say you have like you know two VMs connected with the hypervisors and you want to like you know like on on one of the, the hypervisor you already figured out like you know like what is the L7 ID like you know for that particular flow. Wouldn't it be cool if we could actually like, transfer this over the network? So, you know, like everybody like knows like basically like what we are carrying. And that's what this presentation is about. Like, so I'm not sure how many of the people here are familiar with Geneev. I think most of you should be. But if somebody is not, it's basically a tunneling uh, protocol uh, <clears throat> which kind of enables you to kind of, you know, have uh, add like metadata like in a very generic fashion. So it stands for generic and generic encapsulation like of, for virtualization uh, protocols like so basically you can actually have add kind of any kind of you can add like in a very generic way like any kind of metadata you want over the over the tunnels like so let's get started with the first slide so here i'm actually showing you like how to map a <coughs> geneva option into an open flow oxm uh, so basically we uh, <coughs> The Geneve header is 128 bytes, and as you can see, like the OpenFlow OXM header, when you support like mask, it can only support up to 127 bytes. So it's kind of we want to basically fit the 128 bytes into an OpenFlow OXM, and we were we were kind of you know we had some uh, chat about how we, with with Jesse like you know about how uh, we should basically like go about doing this. And <clears throat> one other thing that came to mind was that we could still use experimenter OXM class. And we have a new field type for you know for all the tunnel metadata. And, and here I basically in my uh, proof of concept code I basically call it like you know ONF OXM ET tunnel metadata. And this would basically you know carry like Geneve traffic and <coughs> Geneve like traffic basically. And then the the length field you know it includes the experimenter ID. So the maximum length that the OXM itself will support. Uh, you know, with the experimenter class is 125 bytes. But basically, if you, you know, if you have an MSB of the experimenter ID to be non-zero, then you can actually support 127 bytes. So that's actually one way that you can actually, like, you know, encode a Geneve-sized uh, uh, option into an OXM. The other alternatives could be that, you know, like, you could get a new OXM class for Geneve, uh, for the Geneve option class registry, and maybe we could, like, you know, uh, reduce the Geneve type space from eight to seven bits, but these are all just like you know like options like what. Uh, right now we are still assuming we can go with the experimenter class and basically use like uh, you know the option that. So this was something that actually Ben suggested that you know we could actually use the MSB of the uh, MSB of the experimenter ID as like you know like all one and as a non-zero non-zero MSB and that way we can actually support like the 127 bytes uh, Geneve option. But there are some other alternatives out there that, you know, uh, like I said, this is all still work in progress. And we are, you know, kind of figuring out, like, what is the best way to basically do this. So the next slide talks about, like, some of the OVS changes itself. So we'll basically go through a very short, like, demo as to what this thing looks like and what this means to OVS. So you can actually see that I created a Geneve tunnel on the, on, you know, in, on, the, on the slide and then Let's go to the tunnel configuration. So right now, all, all it has is a remote IPS flow, and then we're going to have some like Geneva options. <clears throat> so I basically added a flow which has some tunnel metadata, and the metadata itself could be like pretty long, like up to like uh, 120, 124 bytes. I think that's the that's the value like you know which you can support. So <clears throat> each metadata would basically come as one OXM. So basically, in this case, in this example, I have one metadata, but we should be able to support like multiple of those metadata you know fields as part of a single open flow message like so currently you know in open flow like when you try to do like match on something you basically only have like uh, you basically specify the field only once as a part of your like you know obvious like flow mod you cannot have like multiple of them because they get overwritten like if you have multiple of them but with geneve we actually want to be able to support like multiple of the tunnel metadata you know parameters within a single open flow message so each metadata option would be would basically map, like I said, it maps to a single OXM of variable length. 
and the value itself is transparent to the motion infra code, excepting for some validations which would perform like. So in the genuine case, there are some validations which we'll talk about in the later slides. So then I actually run the OES app cuttle command to basically just trace a flow with, uh, which should basically match on this metadata. So you can see there that you know, I basically like created a flow which should match this metadata. And in, in the real world, if you're actually like using a real data path, what would happen in the data path, or you know, a data path is basically the data path would build a key, and what, what we see here in the appctl command is basically that key, you know, which the data path is created. And then that key gets sent over to user space, like. So, and then there you can see the final flow that we basically match on tunnel metadata. And here actually I highlighted like all the wildcard stuff, you know, or the don't care stuff with like, you know, uh, don't care bytes with like two X's. And you can actually see the data path action to be three. So the gist of this demo was basically to basically, you know, tell that in, uh, for the Geneve case, we want to be able to support like multiple tunnel metadata statements in a single line. Uh, or if it's coming as an open flow message, we should be able to have like multiple of these, you know, OXMs, you know, in a single message. And the fact that the length would, could be variable. So the max is, of course, you know, like whatever the Geneve max is, which is up, up to 124 bytes. So let's go through some OVS internals of how all this thing works. So in the o OVS OF cuddle context, when you basically like added that, you know, OVS OF CTL and the whole uh, open flow, you know, the, the flow, what's basically happening is you're parsing like each of that, you know, each of the, the whole uh, string like, uh, you know, parameter by parameter and you're trying to figure out what it, what it is. So there basically, I, you know, I have a loop which basically does, runs the MF parse and it basically maps to a, in something called an MF field. And MF field, like today the assumption is that the MF field can have up to a max length bytes, but <clears throat> you're basically going to like match the whole of that length byte. So the assumption is that, you know, like it's the, the, the length of the MF field, let's say that it's, you know, for Ethernet address or something, you have like a, you know, like a six byte like MF field. So you, you, you are going to basically, you, you need all the, all the six bytes basically. And then uh, as a part of the parse, we call, you know, the corresponding parse function. In this case, it's, it's MF from tunnel metadata string. So what the parse function is doing is it uses the MF field. It knows how to parse it. It can do some validations. And then it's going to separate your, uh, you know, the string into like whatever, you know, the parse representation for that particular field is. So in this case, what I'm trying to parse is I'm trying to parse the metadata. I could do some validation on it. And I can separate out the metadata and its mask. And then the MF set value actually sets the parsed values in a match structure. So at the end, like all this stuff goes into a match structure. And from the match structure, we basically build the open flow message to send it to vSwitchD. And that's what is happening in OFP util put OFP 11 match, where you basically, you know, took your match structure and then you, you know, you call an export draw. And every field you basically see in the, in the match, you actually put it in a, in an NX match format in, into a buffer and you send that OFP buff over to vSwitchD. Now, vSwitchD gets this message, and what does it do? It basically, you know, is going to, let's go to the next slide. So it gets a message, and then it, it calls, like, handle flow mod, because this is a flow mod message, and it's going to try to decode the message. So during the decode, it's going to pull this match structure, and, you know, for every attribute that it finds in this match structure, it's basically going to pull that entry. So you can see the function nx pull match entry. Then it's going to extract the MF field, the MF value, and mask from that entry. And it's going to do some validations, like check for duplicates and make sure that all the prerequisites are met. And after that, it's going to, you know, again, do the same thing what the, uh, you know, the OVS or Fcuttle did, which is basically put this in a match structure. So you're actually building a match structure again here. And once you have a populated match structure, you can go and add the flow. All this happens in user space. And then when there is an up call, like a miss up call, we basically take this information and then we basically build the data path flow. So what exists in the code today for Geneve? We basically have a working Geneve encapsulation data path. In other words, like if there is, if a Geneve packet comes in, we know how to parse the packet, we know how to build the flow, we know how to construct the flow key, and basically, we, you know, that's basically about it. So all the data path or the kernel code is complete, like, but what's missing is that how do you basically map the open flow, like, version of the OXMs or whatever into, like, you know, something that can be, so how do you configure Geneve via open flow? And that's what we're going to talk about in the next few slides. So what are the extensions that are needed? Like one is like, like I said earlier, like the MF field assumes fixed length fields. 
So we need to extend this so that rather than the MF field specifying what is the length of the field, we actually derive that like based on the parse. So in the GenU case, for instance, you know, I parse my metadata and I know what is the length. So, so it should not be, MF, MF, it, it would either be, the max would be MF dash n bytes, it could be less than that, you know, in case that my parse is like uh, only like, you know, like few bytes. And then the second limitation was that the field can only appear once in a flow mod, because if you look at the, you know, if you go back to the previous slide, uh, where we were basically doing this MF parse and MF set, if you basically pass the same field twice, when you set the particular field in the match at a particular offset in the match structure, you're going to override the old one. So it'll, so if I have like match, you know, like something like few times, the same field few times, the last one is what take, take what would take effect. But we don't want that behavior. We, we, we basically want all of them to basically become part of the open flow message. So we need to be able to handle like, uh, you know, multiple of these uh, fields in a, in a, you know, in a single flow mod. And for that, we would, we would need to tra track the offset of, you know, like how much has been already like set for that particular field. So for tunnel metadata, it could mean that, you know, if the tunnel metadata max, which I can support in a flow is, let's say 252 bytes or something, I need to track the offset as I'm parsing, like, you know, like, okay, how much, what was the last value set? And then based on, based on, the, based on that, I, I know, the, you know the next offset where I'm going to set the next value. So some other limitations are like on the struct flow. So we basically, in, in, open, in OVS, we basically have a sparse re representation of the struct flow. Uh, this is an optimization, so we don't, you don't have to actually like go through like all the bytes that are zero because in, for a simple flow, like most of the bytes are going to be zero. So you don't want to like, you know, go and try to like match on all those like zero bytes. So we use a sparse representation of struct flow. And the sparse representation uses like 63 bits to basically specify like which of the four, you know, four byte like words in, in the flow, they actually have some value. So if, if a four byte word does not have a value, the corresponding bit would be zero. So that limits us to a flow uh, whose max length is 252 bytes. And today, if you look at the flow structure, it's already 200, 200 bytes. So we don't have a lot to accommodate there for supporting metadata. So one of the pro you know, things that came to mind was that we could actually separate the flow tunnel and the flow. We make a separate structure and we could actually do the matching on the flow tunnel in a very similar way we match on a flow. So because uh, you know, most of the, classifi the classification code is, uh, is, is kind of agnostic to like what the structure itself is. So you should be able to use that same logic to match on a flow tunnel as you would to flow. Uh, so GenU packet can contain up to 252 bytes of option data. So when I get an up call and I'm going to process the up call, I need to be, a, the metadata should be able to handle at least like that many bytes of uh, you know, the max, max data. Then with respect to the show API itself, so as you would have seen in, in, in the earlier slides, like in the show API, when we were trying to like, you know, trace the flow, you could actually see that, you know, like the, the length of the metadata could be like pretty huge compared to like an IP address or something else. So we, I'm not sure if you want to like dump the whole thing. So I was thinking we could only dump like the relevant bits and not show the wildcard bits. And that also goes for all the DPCTL APIs, like the OF Kotlin and DPCTL APIs. Then another thing that came up in the email thread was about supporting critical and non-critical options. So in, in, in the GenU case, for instance, when you have a critical option that an endpoint cannot support, we are basically supposed to drop the packet because it's a critical option and we don't support it. So that is actually it's straightforward to handle that because, because we could just install a drop flow and if there is no match, that would automatically get added and we're going to like drop the particular packet. But how do we support non-critical options? So maybe we could have a configuration bit mask that specifies that you can, this endpoint supports the, you know, the following set of options. And then we can actually, like, you know, during lookup, only check those options. And any, if any other option is set, we could take whatever action is needed, like maybe log the fact that you know, there was an unrecognized option. But then the requirement there would be that like, you know, every flow that you add on an endpoint should have all the options which that endpoint would support. And it could mean that you know, like some of those options could be default, like, but we still need to add a flow with those default options. So next steps. Um, given that I think this is the whole thing is kind of like some amount of work, so I was thinking that maybe we could implement like the genuine support in phases. And in the first phase, we basically add like the there is some common infrastructure extensions extensions that are needed in the OVS code base itself to support genuine. 
and like the size limitations, for instance, maybe we could fix those size limitations and and have some code base that actually like starts working with those with those you know without those limitations, and then we can slowly extend Jenny, you know, and handle like all these like other things that are needed, like critical, non-critical options and whatnot. So I think that's about it from me. So any questions, feedback? Uh, Johan Tenzing from Netronome. Um, what is the expected requirement here if there are different options uh, with, with uh, maybe a certain set of, of IDs, in other words, the Ts and the TLVs, but in, in a different order in, in different packets? So is the assumption that one will need to somehow sort them in order to make it invariant to the order in which they appear into the packet? Or is the assumption that um, they will always be in a, in a given canonical order in the packet? And could you also comment on um, where you said that you want to match multiple instances of the metadata field? Somehow on that slide, I didn't notice that the T or the um, option ID was being specified. And would that not maybe match um, the the, the same data in different options, but match the wrong option for a certain data value that you're trying to match. Okay. Thanks. So basically, to answer your first question, yes, we would basically like you know my plan was to actually like sort them so we always match the options in the same order. Otherwise, obviously the match is not going to work because I I believe that uh, in a genu packet you can have options in any order. So the second question, like let me go back to the uh, to the demo. So this was just an example, like you know, of what the metadata would look like. So this could be actually like a, like it could actually be like a TLV, like you know, pair. But here I just put like you know some random values, like or random garbage, just to basically like prove like you know like because I, I was the goal of this demo was really to figure out like what do I need to extend in OBS to support Jenny. It was not really about like you know handling certain option. This it, this is not even like a valid option in Jenny or something. Does it make sense? Yes, so to just be precise, I think to, to do it properly, you need to either put the, the option ID after the metadata name and make somehow the ton metadata an array where the index is the option ID, or you can maybe use um, the option ID as the first um, byte or something after the, in the value itself. And that's, yes. that's uh, how you can maybe separate them out, but somehow they will need to be separated to avoid matching the data in any option, but to instead match it to a specific option. Yeah, the way I was looking at it was that this would, this would be a binary blob which would actually look very similar to, you know, the, the Jenny header itself. So you could actually, like, just, you know, pass that binary data, you know, like, as a part of the OBS or Cuttle or as a part of the OXM. Okay, got it. And we are going to basically like so we're going to have a specific parser like for Jenny, which is going to like parse these things and figure out like and sort the stuff and then figure out like okay what what option is what and do any validations on because we also need to validate the options. We cannot just blindly pass them over to the data path, and that would all be a part of the validator. Yeah. So a reason to not uh, just treat it as a binary blob, like you said, is if you want to support um, different encapsulations and be able to match a certain value inside Genève, but also match that value inside some other encapsulation. And then having the, the actual ID be a different thing to the data would maybe be useful. Absolutely, and that, that's basically what the Genève option class is about. So it's about really be able to extend. So the, the option class, you know, it tells you that, okay, like I think there's a class, I forgot the, the value for Genève, but you could support like other option classes. Uh, at least that's what you know. I, I was reading in the draft. So that's one of the goals of having a common uh, common uh, encapsulation mechanism for, to be able to be able to support like different tunneling mechanisms. Yeah. I think you didn't quite understand me, but I'll not take too much time t in the interest of time. But what I meant was, if if that type in Geneva, uh, let's say type number three, 
is in this format in Geneva, but you have another protocol which has also TLVs, also type 3, but it has a different structure of the encoding of the TLVs. Then having the type 3 be explicitly represented um, would allow you to use the same OXM for an option in Geneva and an option in some other protocol. Oh, I see. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, may, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, let's thank our speaker.